symbols, metaphors, impressions, abstract, reality, all in one frame. Art represents essence, captures moments, creates illusions, and narrates the present. Art imitates life. Kola Bold Art powered by Pecha Kucha an engaging chit-chat that delves deep into the world of art and architecture. A journey of 20 slides in 20 seconds each. An impression that lingers on. After Ahmedabad, the journey is carried forward to some of the most eminent architects from Hyderabad. Ladies and gentlemen, a big welcome from Kola Bold Art to a Picha Kucha evening in Hyderabad. This is our second edition in the city, and we're doing it with five leading architects. As in the past, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we celebrate design and ideas, and we do so aided by the simple concept of Picha Kucha which really are informal and fun gatherings where creative people get together and share their ideas, their work, their thoughts, holiday snaps, just about anything that they're comfortable doing, but in the Picha Kucha 2020 format. Our theme this time is Art Imitates Life, and I'm really curious to know what our panel of architects think about that. Before I go on on this topic, I'd like to invite Mr. Salil Sadanandan to make a brief presentation, and our condition to him was that he would do it in Picha Kucha format. Salil. Good evening, uh, uh, Hyderabad. It's a pleasure to be back here. Of all the arts, I, I prefer Impressionism. After all, it is at one level life inspired by a dose of hallucinogens. My favorite painter, Claude Monet, one of whose early paintings gave the name to this genre. Behind every man is a talented woman, or in my case, a vengeful wife. Uh, uh, Monet's muse, our obsession was his wife, Camille, who was a model in many of his paintings. This one is the most poignant of those in which he painted his wife, Camille, as she was dying. He painstakingly painted this over weeks as she lay there waiting for her uh, last breath. So art does imitate death as well. Thank you, and I hope you have a great fun evening. Thank you so much, uh, Salil. And we'll begin with Samarendra Ramachandra, principal architect at SR Associates, and believes in integrity to design, integrity to architecture, and to their clients' dreams. So let's hear Samar tell us about art imitating life or life imitating art. Samar? When we are involved in architecture, for us art is an implicit thing. It, art, is, art is essentially a, a point where you feel that you have taken the mundane you know, program and taken it to a level where uh, it can be appreciated on many levels, you know, on, 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 on a deeper level possibly. So it is our attempt that we bring in subtlety, we bring in a, a sense of peace, uh, we bring in you know, uh, certain elements to our architecture. Life and art and architecture for us, therefore, all become one. Human beings see art and architecture when they envelop themselves. They dig into caves, we build cathedrals, and we perceive ourselves in, in unison with the Almighty when we are in a particular environment. Do we see art in what we do as human beings? Food, another need, another necessity, something that would have been an essential grab thing has now become very elaborate. This is in the place that you see where the entire world is sculpted around the concept of being something which takes and elevates the concept of just having food to another level. This is of course 
where we take our recreation to. Now this would have been just a nicely sculpted little you know, place if it had not been for the fact that it's made of skeletons and human bones all through. Human beings have taken this concept of envelope around them about entertainment to a level where they uh, are working towards something beyond. We drink water, we, we look for water, we dig deep within and we are sculpting mountains. And when we are doing that in some way we are leaving an imprint, an imprint which is just not incidental, but an imprint which follows culture, community and is able to converse with you in the form of art. In this irony, which we call punishment, crime, you see people can even put the other human beings whom they find then, you know, wrong into situations and then work around their environment to create art in prisons, you know, and to somehow see meaning in the, in, in the things that are actually something that, you, that can bind you. There are things that we do for love. Love which is, I think, beyond a human beings feeling just for the another, but for everybody around. And in spite of everything, in spite of everything that a human being goes through from birth to death, some things remain like this space as an embodiment of art in architecture. Thank you. As an architect, how much of art do you see outside? How much of it is created? And do the two balance out? Art is a two-way thing, as everything else in life, I think. It is in the eyes of the perceiver as much as it is in the perceived. Some of these architects in this world, not me, but do some of the architects hold this kind of a power within them to create something which makes you go beyond the mundane functional requirements, which we call as a program, is something that we need to ask ourselves. It's not a statement of absoluteness, but it's a statement that we, that we need to look at. There are some things in architecture that makes me see art in them. And is everything art? Definitely not. But does everything aspire to become art? It probably does. We architects live our lives aspiring to do something that might be art for somebody. Wonderful. I think that answer was perfect. <laughs> We're now on to Bomma Reddy Sridhar Reddy, Chief Architect at Sridhar Reddy Associates. And apart from practicing architecture, Sridhar also shares his knowledge and expertise as faculty with architecture students in industrial and interior design. So ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Sridhar Reddy. So it conveys a lot of meaning in that essence, there's a lot of sense into it. So it really conveys many aspects of life. Good evening, gentlemen. Now we have these two images here. The one is a car and one is a truck. To me, when I was a kid, this car were not really friendly. They were, there's a wicked smile in it. It has an expression by its own. And the lorry is also not so friendly, but even the driver is not friendly to look at. <laughs> and even these two cars, getting into the zoomorphic things, one is a bug, which has been manufactured, which looks like that. And the other one is a tractor, which works in the field. And it is a grasshopper, it looks. I mean, when you see it, the way we see it, because they are so meaningful, so expressive in their thoughts. And then we have our friends away somewhere. Hollywood has done a beautiful thing to, you know, we always look, even animal looks as, you know, they look like us. But away, there are some other people who actually they don't look like that, but the Hollywood has created this to make us, to inculcate fear in us. So we have these parallel images. We don't know actually what is happening. We always see the aliens is, we never knew because we have to, we have actually created gods, ghosts, and everyone. We think that they look similar. Probably they have six eyes, seven hands, 20 legs, but they're still in the same format. 
Now we, we see a person, that's a real face, actually. So what happens in the next frame, we see the man is being identified as Dalai Lama. So a small object, a small frame, a specs has made a lot of difference to the original face in art. Everyone knows what the small object can do. It's a small art object, basically. And this is a small thing I was wondering, suppose in 150 foot in Amaravati, when people would come to Ambedkar statue, I don't know the, how to lead there, you know. Finally we lead, we need to garland him, probably. <laughs> and that's how it is, that's how it looks like. So we see, and this is more of a cultural problem, I mean, how to address it. But definitely there's art, every object is an art form. At the top level, we've never seen an art form. But at certain level, we see it. And that's bold, and that's art. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sridhar. Questions for Sridhar? Sridhar, as uh, someone who teaches uh, architecture, how do you introduce the artistry of architecture to the students that you teach? Remembering from what, how you have grown up, how things move with you, how you start looking at things. And that is what the small attitude when we start looking and sharing the attitude and then the uh, uh, it's just an attitude what we share with people. I, that I share a lot of information with the people with all these contacts as more of an art. Architecture usually comes naturally to them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Our third architect is Srinath Venam. In 2006, he established ANTS. They're committed to working at the intersection of architectural theory and practice. So ladies and gentlemen, Srinath. of a lady dancing, and then I see the image also has this kid dancing, and I was wondering, and this is the image that came up, and say it's a, art imitates life, and then when I looked at the image and I said, it looks more like life imitating art for me. The girl is looking at the art and dancing. So then I started wondering, what is art imitating life? So is the ant hills. It starts off as a small thing, and then, you know, they, they, they build big colonies, which is again a form of function for them, and then now we see people doing molten, concrete supporting them and to make it into an art form. So that's also what opening up when I look into nature. And then I, look, I came across Andy Warhol. Now he says, when I look at this art, it's like art for the sake of art. I don't know whether it means uh, you know, the profound meanings, what we try to bring in when we look at that, but then it's just art on the face of it. This is one of the buildings uh, by Zaha Hadid. And uh, when I started experiencing it more than I even, even being awed by the form and all, I was actually enjoying these little uh, landscape elements around it, how the building is folding, unfolding onto the surrounding areas. So when I started clicking these pictures and I looking at it, I said I can actually play with them. Then coming back to the, towards the end, what I'd say that when you look at art, um, I think it is about how, what we experience, um, not just now, not just as a learned person, but even as a, a layman. So this is one of the, because this is an uh, uh, exhibit by a Russian artist, we're saying blankness and nothing is also can be art. What is art in life for me is nothing but aesthetical experiences that what I can think of when I look back into my life. In turn, what it means is it's a continuum of art imitating life and life imitating art. How do you keep art alive when the brief is someone else's? We have to start educating the client. Second thing, you first have to believe in it. If you believe in it, the, inside you, you can always you know, make the other person understand you. All right, thank you very much, Srinath. That was a brilliant presentation. Thank you. And we move on to our next architect, who is Asghar Ali Khan. And incidentally, I believe Asghar loves cartooning and has been running an online architectural comic strip 
uh, which has gained over 300 followers in just a year's time. So we have a cartoonist come architecture um, expert uh, called Asghar Ali Khan, and I invite him now to do his Picha Kucha. <laughs> When we cross the basic, uh, uh, the, the, the levels of, uh, you know, your regular roti, kapra and makan, the next thing you need in life is some aesthetic, some kind of beauty. And that's where art steps in. So I think it's integral to, uh, to life. Uh, we have uh, Somnath Kesava Temple. Now this is phenomenal. This is an entire epic carved in stone. Human beings have tried to create, tried to produce something artistic. Nature has always been a source of inspiration. So you can see how, uh, you know, from the animal, the plant, and the nautical kingdom, uh, we bring uh, the spiral form into our own homes and our own uh, uh, lives. Art cannot exist out of nature. It has to be a part of the whole encompassing life force. And this is another beautiful uh, concept when you see the underlying idea is basically a bird in flight, but you see all these four buildings, all these four structures, they have a stamp of individuality, and that is what nature is capable of producing when coupled with the human mind. Now, I would like to conclude with this beautiful concept here by uh, the British Indian artist Anish Kapoor. It's a concave uh, mirror, polished to a very high uh, degree, and, and placed in the public realm. People walk across, the seasons change, the, the shadows lengthen and shorten. Art form, masterpiece, sitting right in, in the middle of it all and absorbing it and reflecting it back to the viewer. So uh, I think this is where I think uh, the whole fundamental idea of art imitating life, the best form of imitation, in fact. Thank you. Questions? Oh, yes. Um, you said that nature is an inspiration for art, yeah? And with the rapid urbanization that we are facing today, how do we balance both of them? Urbanization is not something anti-nature. Uh, today uh, we are experiencing that, but if done with the sensibilities, the sensitivities of uh, the situation, what the situation demands, I think they can, they can go hand in hand uh, really well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oscar. Thank you. We've got our final architect now to make our presentation, and he is Rohit uh, Suraj, founder and design director at Urban Zen. Urban Zen remains true to their founding principles, which is about uh, instilling fascination, elevating the human spirit, and initiating conversation. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Rohit Suraj. So introduce the villains. I mean, every good story has a villain. Um, and we have, of course, the municipality and, uh, and Vastu. Odds that are impossible to avoid, and ones uh, that I sometimes feel we must not resist. Instead, just include them and go on. So bringing back the villains into focus, we had to create these floor plans. And uh, floor plans were created uh, with Vastu. You see here how landscape and architecture uh, sort of form that intimate embrace. Rhetorically speaking, moving forward, we observed the form of a ballerina caught, uh, caught mid-flight in a split leap. 
And for me, this moment when frozen in time um, signified the infinite. So if we cantilever structures over multiple structures, what I um, uh, sort of said, that you get a structure that's continually reaching out, uh, which I termed the infinite. And this uh, is what uh, we call the leap. So you see here uh, the structures, uh, one on, on top of the other. Last but not the least, in continuing with dance, I present to you in 20 seconds, Dancing with Nature. architecture is really about art and life and all, all, all things in between. So, so this is one of those um, which uh, coincidentally go sort of caught up with the tale we're trying to tell here. Thank you. Well, one word sums it up, and it's just three letters. Wow. So we have a question here for you. Hi, Rohit. Hello. You said form can follow fiction. I want to know what is the extent of fiction? Fiction is basically, when, I, when we refer to fiction, uh, it's not about uh, what is uh, unreal. It's about being able to tell a story with the things you do. And, uh, and when I say story about uh, the people who live in it, what I actually mean, uh, it, uh, not so much um, in the storytelling way, but, um, uh, but y take a gated community, for instance. Um, there could be a newly married couple that's looking for a house. There could be a family with a handicapped person looking for a house. So how do you bring all these uh, requirements into something and put it into perspective in a way uh, that there is a bit of everything for someone? When I do say uh, fiction, uh, I am only purely referring to, to, to bringing these stories of people uh, and life um, into architecture. Very much, Rohit. Thank that you. was an Thank excellent you. presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Rohit Suraj. Uh, thank you very much. You've been a fantastic audience. Uh, thank you to our speakers who have made very meaningful and uh, impactful presentations. That was a wonderful evening, and uh, the subject is something which is very close to my heart. And architecture is uh, very uniquely placed it, at the cusp of art and life. So it actually imitates both. Nice initiative by Kohler for the Picha Pucha thing. It's again an out of box thinking as they have their products. It was a different uh, experience because it's rare that you get to know the ideas of your peers and your contemporaries. It's a it's a really nice thing. I had a nice evening. Kohler organizing Picha Pucha. It's a lovely evening we've uh, attended here and then it was uh, real nice last time but it is better this time and hopefully it will be still better the next time.